Hello, elementary school children in schools across America and on the United States military bases around the world. It's Michael T. Mondak once again. I hope you all enjoyed your weekend. So now, as if you haven't been with us last week, I've been reading one picture book to you, your teachers, and your parents virtually from my home. Um, for the rest of the calendar year and possibly into the new year. And today I come to you virtually from historic Oakmont Country Club in, outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where where the clue is as is the where our story will begin for today. Have you wondered what it would be like if we were all the same? And nobody was different? Well, Lady Elaine Fairchild found that out for herself when she visited an unusual planet that was colored in purple, where everything was purple. The people were purple. And all the animals were purple pandas. Well, Mr. Rogers told, made up a story about it in a book from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood titled, If We Were All the Same. In fact, he wrote the storyline and Pat Sustendahl illustrated it. So if you're ready, I'm gonna take on the role of narrator Mr. Rogers and we're gonna travel to the Oakland section of Pittsburgh where our story begins. Suppose everyone in the world looked exactly the same. Everyone ate the same food, lived in houses that were the same, and even had the same thoughts. How do you think it would feel to be in a world like that? Hey, we could make up a story about that. Pretending things is often a good way to find out how you feel about them. I tell you what, let's make it a story about the neighborhood of make-believe. Anything can happen there. Ray Charlie, let's go. Now let's pretend that Lady Elaine Fairchild is flying on her very own spaceship. She had been out to visit the stars and was on her way home again when suddenly she saw a purple something floating in the sky. That's out of this world, she said to herself. I'd better go right over and take a look. The purple something turned out to be a tiny purple planet. When Lady Elaine landed there, she knew at once she was in a very strange place. Everything was purple. The sky was purple. The grass was purple. The trees were purple. The people were purple. Not only was everything purple, everything was exactly the same. The cars were the, all the same. The houses were all the same. The people were all the same. Everybody talked the same and walked the same. Everybody even had the same ideas. What's more, the only animals on Planet Purple were purple pandas, and they were all exactly the same, too. When Lady Elaine stepped off her spaceship, she saw purple people and a purple panda right away. Doot, doot, she said. I'm Lady Elaine Fairchild from the neighborhood of Make Believe. Who are you? I am Paul, said one of the purple people. I am Pauline, said one of the other purple person. I am Purple Panda, said the panda. And the where in the world are we, Lady Elaine asked. All together, in the same kind of voice, they answered, you have discovered Planet Purple. Whoopee, shouted Lady Elaine, and she took a good look around. To her surprise, she found out that Planet Purple people even had the same names. Every man was called Paul. Every woman was called Pauline. Every panda was called Purple Panda. The purple people were surprised too. The first time they'd seen the color green was when Lee Elaine's spaceship landed from the purple sky. They were certainly surprised to meet a pink person. Just wait till I tell the folks back home about this place, Lee Elaine said. As soon as Lee Elaine took off again for home, Paul and Pauline and Purple Panda had a new idea. It was the first new idea on Planet Purple. Someday soon, they decided, we will go visit this strange person from the neighborhood of make-believe. 
When her spaceship landed at home, Lady Elaine hopped out and told everyone about Planet Purple. She even talked about it on television. It's a great place, she said, and I discovered it. From now on, we're going to do things the Planet Purple way around here. Lady Elaine did everything she could just to be like the people on Planet Purple. First, she painted all the rooms in the museum go round purple. Next, she ordered some purple clothes. Then she only started to eat only purple pumpernickel pudding. And she insisted that everyone be called Paul or Pauline. And of course, she called herself Pauline. One morning, Lady Elaine woke up to find she had visitors from Planet Purple. Paul, Pauline, and Purple Panda. We traveled the purple way, they explained. All we had to do was think of being here with you. And here we are. The Planet Purple visitors could hardly believe what they saw. Everything in the neighborhood was different. The sky was blue. The grass was green. The houses had different shapes. No one looked exactly the same. Lady Elaine took the visitors to the castle to introduce them to the Queen and King. This is Queen Pauline and King Paul, Lady Elaine said to her new friends. It is a pleasure to welcome such distinguished guests, said the king. However, Lady Elaine, my name is King Friday the 13th, and this is Queen Sarah Saturday, as you well know. That's what you think, said Lady Elaine. You're Paul and she's Pauline to me, and you can call me Pauline too while you're at it. The visitors looked nervous. That is a strange way to talk to a king, said Purple Panda. Queen Sarah smiled. That's all right, Purple Panda, she said. Lady Elaine often has ideas of her own. If we were all the same, our kingdom would be a lot less interesting. That's one reason Lady Elaine is so important to us. Lady Elaine Fairchild is important to us on our planet, too, Paul and Pauline said. Well, what do you know about that, said Lady Elaine. Paul and Pauline liked the neighborhood of make-believe. Before they went home, they did as much exploring as they could. Purple Panda was so excited with all the new and different things that he decided to stay there. Before Paul and Pauline went home, they looked and they listened, and they smelled and they touched. They spent their time collecting different colors and sounds, smells, and feelings. One day, Paul was outside the castle trying to gallop like a horse. Suddenly, he tripped and he fell and hurt his knee. Then the strangest thing happened. Something wet started coming down his cheek. Are you all right, Paul? asked Queen Sarah, who happened to be walking in the garden. Paul rubbed, it, tubbed his knee. Paul rubbed his knee. I think so, he said. But what is this water coming from my eyes? That's called tears, said Queen Sarah, sitting down beside him. And when tears come down your face, that's called crying. It's one way we have people here for telling people we need them. When Pauline saw Paul's tears, she put her arms around him. Queen Sarah smiled. Paul felt better. I never knew I could feel so many different ways, said Paul. He and Pauline could hardly tell their purple, wait to tell their purple friends about the different things in the neighborhood of Make Believe. So they just thought about being back on Planet Purple. And all at once, that's exactly where they were. Paul and Pauline told all their Planet Purple friends about the neighborhood of Make Believe. Everything is so different, and nobody is exactly the same as anyone else, Pauline explained. They talked about the color of the clear, clear blue sky, the sound of a yellow canary, the smell of a meat green, green mint leaf, and the taste of a red tomato. Paul told about crying and all the different ways of feeling. The people on Planet Purple liked what they heard. But where is Purple Panda, asked the other Purple Pandas. He decided to stay in the neighborhood of make-believe, said Paul. He liked being the only purple panda there. But I miss purple panda and I want to see him again, said purple panda's best friend, blinking his eyes. A few tears ran down his cheeks. That was the very first time anyone on planet purple had felt sad. Purple panda will be back to visit, said Paul, giving the sad panda a hug. The people on planet purple decided to make some changes. Someone wanted to live in a blue house, and another wanted to live in a yellow house. Some people started wearing red clothes and eating green food. Before long, everyone on Planet Purple began to walk and talk in different ways. 
they no longer want to be exactly the same. And even though Purple Panda remained in the neighborhood of Make Believe, he sent messages to all his friends back home, and they sent messages to him. Well, what's the news from the old Purple Planet? asked Lee Elaine one day. Things are changing there, Purple Panda told her. Now everyone likes being different, and it is all because of you. You showed us what different is. I did, said Lee Elaine. Little old me? Yes, said Purple Panda, and we have even changed the name of our planet. It is now called Planet Purple Fairchild in your honor. Whoopee, shouted Lee Elaine. Fairchild's the name and Discovery's the game. Wait till I tell King Paul. Lady Elaine interrupted Purple Panda, looking nervous again. Oh, all right, said Lady Elaine. Wait till I tell King Friday. Come to think of it, I guess I'm glad that Friday's just who he is, too. And she and Purple Panda made plans to visit Planet Purple Fairchild to celebrate many different things. <laughs> Isn't it good to know that we can have some things that are the same and some things that are different no matter who we are? Nobody has to be like exactly like anybody else, but people can like us exactly as who we are. And that, my friends, is, the, is how, what would happen if we were all the same. Thank you for your attention, and I'll catch you again tomorrow.